Southeast Asian startups are on the brink of a golden age. We've mentioned that earlier in the show before. And currently, there are 21 entities composed of 17 unicorns and four decacorns in the region. Now, out of that number, seven Indonesian startups have already achieved the status of unicorns and decacorns. Now, more startups have recently been founded. And aside from catering to urban areas, they also are available for rural communities. Now, how do these Indonesian startups survive amid intense market companies? Competition. To find out more about it, we're now connected with the CEO of a startup called Dagangan, right? Masrian Manape. It is a tech-based social commerce startup focusing on the rural market. We also have Mas Yoganin Dito, co-founder of Semai, the agri-tech startup that aims to transform Indonesian rural areas by boosting agricultural development. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for joining us on the Daily Wrap-Up. Hello, hello. Thanks for having us as well. Thanks for having us. Yes. So, uh, Mas Rian, Mas Yoga, can each of you explain about Dagangan and Semai um, consecutively? Mas Rian, if you don't mind, you can answer first. What is um, your per particular um, startup and uh, how? What, what impact does it give to the rural communities? Well, well, thanks, Kai. Uh, to start with, I think as you mentioned that we are the biggest producers of unicorns and decacorns in the region, which is Southeast yeah. Asia, but at the same time, uh, we don't forget that 70% of the population are actually living outside big cities, right? And yes. and to be able to unlock the full potential, it's very important for startups to start reaching out to, to the areas outside the, the big cities. And, and when I'm saying reaching out, some startups probably say, yes, yes, we are we're going out. But, you know, in the reality, they probably only go one hour, two hours outside Jakarta, mm. outside Surabaya. But we're talking about five, seven, eight hours from the big cities. Yeah. I'm talking about Kelampok, Bumi Ayu, Grabak, mm -hmm. you know, all of the random places that you probably never visited before. There are millions of people there. And we focus to unlock the potential by number one, providing them affordable access towards daily necessities so they can really yeah. be productive. And at the same time, mm -hmm. once they become productive, we help them market their products to the cities because the market is there. Mm -hmm. Imagine if uh, your friends coming from Jogja bringing bak bakpia, you know, the local mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. Now you probably cannot get it that often because people are not going out physically that often anymore. But well, going forward, you can find it in Dagangan easily. And not only bakpia, all of the local products, you can find it in Dagangan. At the same time, if you have you know, uh, relatives in the rural areas, they can get mm -hmm. whatever they need right away from Dagangan. Ah, so just just out of curiosity, to summarize, you're trying to tell me that you know those um, producers in the rural areas that make specific things, like for instance, bapia, right? Um, from Jogja and I'm in Jakarta, instead of you know, um, instead of asking my friend or instead of me going to um, going to Jogja, and if I want bapia, I can just order straight away from Dagangan because they provide straight away on the platform. Yes, but beforehand, of course, we have to make sure they are actually fulfilled in terms of getting the daily ah. necessities. That's, that's, that's why we start from providing them uh, affordable daily necessities, the people in Ah, the okay. Now, on to Mas Yoga. What about Semai? Now, I know that you are very specific. Um, you are an agri-tech um, startup that I've, I've taken a look that, that caters to, you know, farmers there in the rural areas. Mas Yoga, can you introduce your startup, please? Semai sounds very, very interesting. So I want to pick up where uh, Mas Rian uh, left off, you know, um, yeah. uh, most of these startups in Indonesia are basically, uh, you know, urban startups, right? But, yeah. you know, when, when I started Samai, I think of, you know, I, I, I think of one area, you know, I try to think of an area that's our, that is very rural. And then, uh, you know, I just started to pinpoint, you know what, I'll just move here. And, and that, that mm. was party party uses is in, uh, still in Jawa Tengah, but that's yeah, yeah. like, you know, out, uh, in the middle of nowhere, right? So um, I, I, I think I can feel you on that, Mas Rian. <laughs> so coming back to Semai itself, Semai is a full stack uh, a solution for upstream agriculture. So uh, basically we make sure that farmers get the best quality agri inputs, such as seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, mm. and also equip them with good uh, agricultural practice through uh, technology. So um, as we see, uh, you know, farmers, they don't have access to uh, internet, you know, all these new technology that are uh, showing up, you know, uh, they're the last ones to uh, benefit from that. And, you know, that's why we uh, tailor our 
digital first approach and you know mm -hmm. focusing in the upstream of agriculture and i think that that has the potential to unlock uh, the uh, 55 billion market opportunity in inputs agri lending and also market linkages down the line well, you know, very interestingly, both of you are, you know, providing, um, you know, digital access to um, to rural areas in different ways. But I have to really ask this question. Isn't it challenging, though, for the infrastructure? Um, how did you make sure that your application can be used in the rural communities if they don't always have access to Internet? If perhaps their digital literacy isn't optimal, where did you start? Um, Masriyan, you can go first. Well, uh, I totally agree with you. That's why if some players would say that the, the rural people can adopt with the digital lifestyle using the apps right away, I'm not sure whether we can do that. But mm -hmm. in fact, uh, having physical presence, you have to be there. And when I'm talking, you have to be there. It's not just like a banner and posters in the rural areas. You have to set up a presence. I'm talking about building mm -hmm. local teams, working with the local influencers, and, mm -hmm. and, and really make people see Dagangan is not international, national company. It's the company that coming from that area. Mm -hmm. So people can easily, you know, uh, trust it. And because you use the local people, you use them to educate the people, guide the oh, people. And they are probably their friends, their family members, their relatives. So the adoption can be happening right away. But pure digital approach, I don't think it's going to work. Mm. So you have to go on the field to start something, right? And how about you, once you got? Same. Same. It's completely the same. I mean, uh, if you think about it, uh, uh, my customers, my my people, you know, the agri people, only 40% of farmers use smartphones, actually. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really make sense to build a solution directly for the farmers, you know, building an app for farmers, you know, that's, um, uh, I don't think that's ever going to work. So instead, we build an app for uh, local uh, Tokotanis, uh, which are the farm supply retailers, you know, mm, uh, yeah. uh, seller of fertilizers and these kind of guys, and then also cooperatives that which features a marketplace. And, uh, you know, this app uh, has also the tools that they need to better serve their customers, as in the farmers, because farmers usually will go to uh, these retailers and they, they say that this, this is like a, uh, a pharmacy, uh, you know, farmers would go to the stores and then, you know, with the uh, uh, with their plans and then, you know, ask the uh, store owners, you know, well, it, it, my, my plan is sick, then well, what do I do with it? And then they will mm. just give them the, you know, so, so to say medicine um, to the farmers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, why we're doing this, you know, if you if you think about it, one Tokotani or one uh, farmer store can, can serve up to 1,000 farmers. So mm -hmm. in a sense that dealing with one Tokotani can get us access to this 1,000 farmers. Wow. So um, we are going to take a short break, but we will continue our discussion with Mas Yoga and Mas Rian because this is very interesting. We're going to um, talk about the scope and outreach of their, um, each of their, of course, each of their applications, each of their startups, and also the G20 presidency, how this ties up to building the digital, econo digital economy for Indonesia as well. So make sure you stay tuned with us on the daily wrap up with us right here on C Today. Oh, 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 oh,